This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and I'm Do Going On and with, oh my god, <laughs> Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. That was really good, Dave. That was awesome, well done. Dave. Good well job. Well done. I think you finally got it right. Oh, thank goodness. Well, uh, what are we, 91 episodes in? I reckon I could just copy and paste this audio at the start of every episode from here on. I out. think it's good within the first 15 seconds to get it. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was oh a regret god. voice. Yeah. yeah you what hated have I done? It. Your face showed no emotion, but... It never does. You could hear it in the voice. Yeah, you can always hear it. What do you mean? You always talk about how emotive my face is. You've got a very emotive face. You've got Thank a very you. rubbery, dumb face. It's not emotive. It's a very different thing. It's the second time Matt looked at a photo of me before and said, look at your dumb face. <laughs> I didn't comment, but inside I, I put on the ledger. It's not, that's a strike against your name. And you know me. I'm vengeful. You are vengeful. You I'm are fucking vengeful. You I want to get on that list. Because you, you, you can't get off. <laughs> Just try. I can't. Now that I'm on that list, I can't get off. Try. Try and get off. I've been trying for the last minute. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Limp as a bloody... No. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Under a minute and we're having another regret. This is yeah. fun, isn't it? Guess would you like to regret something oh, out loud? Oh, I've always regretted something out loud. <laughs> oh, no. I laughed within about three seconds and after some harsh criticism of the sound of my laugh recently, I'm a little... <laughs> A little self-conscious about <laughs> All right. it. <laughs> All right, so Jess may have got a bit of feedback. The one <laughs> negative feedback, everyone loves your laugh. People talk about, I don't think the show would exist without it. We've had one Mm-mm. negative feedback. So, that made no sense also. And it, it was, was very offensive. Yeah, Matt, why did you have to tell her her laugh sucked? <laughs> did I do that? No, it wasn't you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like that he thought that that was a possibility, yeah. though. You think I been, may have said it. It would have been a lie. I talk a lot of trash. Hey, we've got um, we've got something exciting coming up very soon. Oh don't my we? goodness! So it's July now when we're recording this, but next month and also is... when we're releasing it. Yeah, we're releasing this like tomorrow, the next day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's almost live. <laughs> Thirty six hours away. Um, but we are coming to Sydney next month in August, ooh, at the end of August, ooh, ooh. for JP and my birthdays. Matt. Is Can I tag along? Coming along. Matt has been invited. <laughs> he, That's he real is, nice. He is carrying our bags. <laughs> On our birthday weekend extravaganza. Oh, so good. You'd be like my mum when we used to go to Disneyland and stuff. She always referred to herself as the bag lady. I'll yeah. actually already, I'll already be there doing gigs. Everyone should come and see me. I'm doing a show with Nick Kappa at the Giant Dwarf on the Saturday, whatever the day before. Saturday, July, is. August. 26th, Matthew. Everyone should come to that on what the What else 26th. is on the 26th? I couldn't tell you. Oh, you piece of shit. You're it's it's piece everyone, it's Jess's birthday. Uh, so You're we buying will... me a big beer now. Yeah, it's going to be the biggest. <laughs> We're also going to be doing our live show while we're there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we may as well. May as well on uh, Sunday, August the 27th at the Chippo Hotel in Chippendale. We have already sold well over half our tickets, so it looks like it's going to sell out. So please, if you're in the area or you want to go to that area. Yeah. I mean, we're going to the area. It's not crazy to think people might go to that area. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd go to that area. We're going oh, to that we'll area. go to that area. Hmm. I love it when people, I, I hear this a bit, and I'm, I'm sorry to unpack what you're doing, Dave. But you're doing this great sales tactic of saying, very few tickets, please buy the tickets. Which usually it's, means there's none, right? As it normally does. Sold? And I know Dave's not lying. There are less than half tickets left. But I love that sales technique of going, there's not many left. We're not stressing about selling these tickets. Yeah. Obviously, they, someone's going to buy them. Yeah. <laughs> You better make it you. I'm looking out for you. Yeah. Everyone I'm talking I'm to. I'm doing this. The thousands thing. and thousands of people I'm talking to. I'm worried about you individually. <laughs> so it sort of it makes no logical sense, but I love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dave, you pick do you have a reply? Uh, my reply is you've gone one step up the ledger, you fucking prick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to sell your tickets here. <laughs> trying right. to put food on your table, champ. Fine. fine. Well, should we go with, the, with a desperate plea? Hi, guys. Uh, we're coming, we booked in to come to Sydney. We've all paid for flights. Mm-hmm. We've all paid for accommodation. Mm-hmm. And we haven't sold a single ticket yet. <laughs> Huh? Wait, is that true? Dave? No, it's not true at all. The first one's true, but whatever makes them buy the second half of the tickets, that's all I, I want. I don't think it's pity. Yeah, I don't think that works. I think desperation of, oh, I better not miss out. I think that works better. Okay, great. So remember, we've sold more than half the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have. We are our own worst salespeople. And I blame you for that, Matt. I used, they used to do it for a living. I as know. Well. <laughs> I know all the tricks. <laughs> Undermine yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Panic. <laughs> Sweat a lot. <laughs> Stress about your money situation. <laughs> Steal from your parents. <laughs> yeah, I know all the, We've done the it tricks all. of the trade. So yeah, anyway, you should you should get tickets if you would like to come along. And it's going to be the best. We're going to have so much fun. I can't wait. I don't want you there. 
<laughs> oh, Sorry, playing hard to get yeah, that work? Yeah, that's what you did. And we're going to drink beers afterwards if anyone wants to drink beers with us. I won't drink any beer. Oh, with me. <laughs> cool. Hey, I'm Dave. leaving straight away. I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, come hang out. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> uh, we have a dis- ticket link in the description of this episode if you want to view it. And hey, on social Dave. media. Sorry, Matt. No, you're all right. I know you often talk over me. That's fine. <laughs> Hey, Dave, um, maybe just as an example to people who are maybe tuning for the first time, to let them know maybe what they might see when they come to the show, maybe you should today do a, do a little topic, do a report. Okay, a little, uh, little sizzle. Yeah, yeah, do you reckon you could whip one up? or Just as an example of, of what we do here. Okay, well, I've, obviously I'm freestyling here, so this is from the top of my head. Okay. Top of your dome, Dave, if you're freestyling. <laughs> Straight from the top of your dome. Is that Bomb Funk MCs? Yeah, but, yeah sure. Of course it is. Cool. I, recently I always re- preach from the book of Bomb Funk. I, I, <laughs> you are the coolest person I've <laughs> ever met. I know, Jess. Stop I re- saying so it. so fucking cool. <laughs> How'd you get so cool? <laughs> <laughs> you just like, you just don't even try. You're so fucking cool. <laughs> She's really doubling down, and I like that. I like that commitment. I love it. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Captain Cool. <laughs> Captain Cool, can I just say that I recently referenced Bum Funk MCs to a friend, and they th- they were like, Bum Funk? I thought it was Bum Funk MCs. <laughs> Bum Funk. <laughs> Bum Funk. <laughs> Straight from, not from the top of your dome, right there. All right. From your bum. From your bum. <laughs> All right, I've got, I do have a topic. This is the show where one of us uh, is given a topic, usually drawn from the hat that a listener has suggested, as mine is this week, and uh, you two do not know what I'm about to report on. Mate, I bloody never know what you're about to say. <laughs> you are wild. But again, this is from straight from the top of my dome. Yeah. As a rock, 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 rock the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> God, you're a cool guy. <laughs> you motherfuckers. Anyway, yeah. People are going to be confused, Jess, because you're laughing, but they're going, yeah, he is. But I'm not even joking. <laughs> he is. I was genuinely like, that's really funny. <laughs> You're so cool. I don't understand what she's doing, Dave. <laughs> Neither um, do I. I'm trying. This sales technique is really working for you, Jess. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but I'll buy whatever you got. Just get out of my head. <laughs> Dave, kick us off right, with a question. We always start with a question. My question is. Open one here. Feel free to throw some guesses at me. Who is the coolest person ever? A Matt Stewart. <laughs> what is she doing? I, well, who... She's making me feel weird. <laughs> if Matt Stewart uh-huh. is the coolest and most famous man that's ever lived, yes. who is arguably the most famous woman that has ever lived? The Mona Lisa. Oh. <laughs> we covered her in topic Queen one. Queen Elizabeth. We've done her as well. Uh, most Marie famous Curie. woman. <laughs> um, Nikki Webster. <laughs> There's a big jump between Murray Curie and Nikki Webster. Helen Keller. I do remember a Most few years ago one. there was the Sportswoman of the Year and that went to Black Caviar, the racehorse. Sports is it woman something of like the that? Sportswoman <laughs> of the Year. There is like four minutes of bloopers of Matt not being able to say the word can't sportswoman. Hit, can't hit the right syllable. Sportswoman. Sportswoman. Sports. Woman can be sports. I still too. don't know what I was doing wrong. <laughs> I'm going to share that with this episode. Um, yeah, is it Black Caviar? It is not. It's much older than Black Caviar. Most famous. Oh, Cleopatra. Oh. We have is- a winner. What? <laughs> that is a very well done guess. Great job. Would you say arguably the most famous yeah, woman? Yeah, I think so. Ever lived? Well, I mean, it's a. I got it from the question, so I suppose that's Queen- a pretty good question. One of, what about uh, what's the Queen, Queen Victoria was pretty famous. What if I told you that I put three people in the hat to vote? Queen Victoria is one of them. I had Queen Victoria, Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't even remember the third one. That's how famous she is. Wow! And the top the category was famous women of history. Was that your theme this yeah, year? Yeah, that's right. I went with uh, this year. from three <laughs> different eras. It was. That's cool. So, uh, and quite timely with the uh, with the new Doctor Who being announced. That's, that's as Cleopatra. <laughs> it's Cleopatra, oh, yeah. Mate, he, I mean, he, she is a time traveller. Yeah, exactly. So it's very exciting. I bet I bet Doctor Who has met Cleopatra in one of the episodes. Definitely. And now, Q, cool. one million tweets. Cleopatra. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, but Cleopatra, <laughs> Cleopatra won uh, 60% of the vote. Wow. By the way, if you are a Patreon of us, you get to vote on whatever I report on. Three topics go in there, so... Cleopatra won 60% of the votes, so not even a close run thing. It was suggested by Tristan on Facebook. Thank you very much, Tristan. Thanks, Tristan. 
Never know. All right, Cleopatra. Cleopatra. So for a bit of background here, Cleopatra was born in 69 or 68 BC. <laughs> Let's go with 69. <laughs> Fact. Let's go with 69. Don't take that not out of context. Not the first time Dave said that. <laughs> Let's go with 68. Not the first time Dave said that either. <laughs> he quickly corrected himself to 69. <laughs> Uh, she was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, mm-hmm. which is a family... Th- By the way, there's a million names in here. A lot of them... All, all of them ancient names. Do you so, remember back in the day we used to write notes? Yeah. That was cute, wasn't it? Not doing that anymore. It would probably help if you did. <laughs> Keep track of This is crazy. Okay. So Cleopatra, born 69 BC. She was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which is a family of Greek Macedonian origin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ptolemy who was one of the seven bodyguards who served as Alexander the Great's generals and deputies, was appointed satrap, a.k.a. governor of Egypt, when Alexander died in 323 BC. So Alexander, basically, he's probably the greatest military leader that's ever lived. Mm-hmm. And, it, and he was such a good general and king that he kept everyone in line. And, but when he, di- when he died, his empire uh, spread all the way from Greece to India. So it was one of the biggest empires in history. Wow. It was so massive that all his generals and family and friends, when he died, they started fighting about who got what. Oh, shit. Because he used to keep everyone in line. So after years of fighting with the other generals, Ptolemy, the guy I was talking about, in 305 BC, declared himself to be Ptolemy I and the king of Egypt. He referred to himself as a pharaoh in front of an Egyptian audience and as a basilus when speaking to Greeks. Now, the super confusing... Oh, this is just background to you, by the way. But the super confusing part... You've, you have genuinely lost me. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm out. All right, I'll, we'll sum it up in a second. But the, the confusing part about the Ptolemaic dynasty is that everyone who became king or pharaoh of Egypt referred to themselves as Ptolemy. <laughs> okay, shit. So there is 15 Ptolemies oh, in a row. Oh, fuck. So this is the first one. This is how Cleopatra's family became in charge of Egypt, pretty much. Her great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather... 240 years before she lived, became the pharaoh of Egypt and then it just got passed down the line to her. Right. Uh, Ptolemaic queens, most of whom were the sisters of their husbands, were usually called what? Cleopatra. <laughs> sisters of their husbands. They, as in what? They like married their, their brothers? sister-in-laws? <laughs> sisters of their husbands. Yeah. So you married, no, you your married sister your sister. Ew. Wait, you married your sister. Yeah, so Ptolemy would have kids and then his kid Ptolemy would marry his sister, Ew. Cleopatra, and then they'd keep doing that. Wait, where... you got to keep the blood royal. <laughs> okay. Oh, yuck. But your brother... Bleh. So you got to... <laughs> so there's there's a, a guy, right? And he's the Ptolemy. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then his son... Is Ptolemy. Is also Ptolemy. And that second... Ptolemy 2 marries Ptolemy 1's sister. So his auntie? No. No, no, no. He marries Ptolemy 2's sister. He marries his own sister. So he sister. marries his own sister. The husband's sister. Is Cleopatra. <laughs> so there's lots of Cleopatras. I just watched an episode <laughs> of Rick and Morty before where there was all these Mr. Mr. Mises. Oh my god, I love that. Is Mr. it like Macy. that? <laughs> is it sort of like that? Yeah, I think all it's like that. All the Cleopatras. Yes, Dave, just say yes. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, now, and then now as soon as they've get get completed their task, they disappear. They disappear. Yeah. Okay, now I get it. <laughs> great, I'm glad you get it. <laughs> But by the time Cleopatra, the one that we know, she's actually Cleopatra the seventh. By the time she came along, 240 years after her great 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 grandfather had become the first pharaoh, she was the daughter of Ptolemy the twelfth. Her mother is unconfirmed, but most believe her to be Cleopatra the fifth, who was the wife and sister of her father. Great. So to keep the that's super inbred. Yeah. So to keep the blood 100% royal, it was tradition to marry your brother or sister. If you couldn't find one at a stretch, you could marry your cousin. That's cool. If you couldn't find one? So like if you're... If you're <laughs> like if Ptolemy just Where'd had... Where'd he go? Uh, Ptolemy! Fuck, well, my cousin's right here. <laughs> Cleopatra's family tree is insane to look at. It, it's so crazy. Her Just mo- the trunk. Her mother was her father's niece, and thus not only her mother, but also her cousin. Oh, Mo- wait, her mother, mother was her father's niece. Was her father's niece. So her mother is her mother and her cousin. I understand. Oh, that is very confusing. It yeah. is absolutely, like if you look at, the, people have tried to draw diagrams of it and I just do not get it because everyone's what, related, everyone's related. You'd want to have a bloody hot cousins, you know what I mean? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 
No doubt about that. <laughs> All you have to know is kings are Ptolemies, queens are Cleopatra, and when Cleopatra came along, her dad is in power and he's Ptolemy the Twelfth. Yeah, but the big question is, Matt, which one of your cousins would you want to marry? Oh, if you have to pick one. I'm going to have to go with Cleopatra. The? Famous one. The rich, <laughs> the rich seventh? famous one. The seventh, yeah. Seventh. Okay, cool. Because I think we're about to find out she's great. Okay. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of uh, corruption in Ptolemy the Twelfth's reign, making it one of the most... Calamitous of the entire dynasty. Good so word. Well done. He's not a good king. My favourite description of Cleopatra's father, Ptolemy the Twelfth. Ptolemy the Twelfth was generally described as a weak, self-indulgent man, a drunkard, and a music lover. <laughs> oh, the a end. Matt Stewart type. <laughs> <laughs> a weak, self-indulgent man. Yes. Okay. A Tick. drunkard. Yes. Two ticks. Two ticks. A music lover. Yes. Also two ticks. Wow. He's wearing a Meredith What's the downside? Right now. <laughs> Down- and he was calamitous. And, and very corrupt. Right. That sounds like me. Yeah. I'm into it. <laughs> What's this guy's name? Ptolemy the Twelfth. All right. That's a tattoo option. <laughs> <laughs> Ptolemy X Y I. In. I'm going to pencil that in. We'll get it inked in the morn. <laughs> I'm really worried about this episode because you, you're struggling with the first few names and there's like a million oh, here. No. Okay. Well, there's only been two names so far. And I just remember Ptolemy and Cleopatra. Yep. In 58 BC, Ptolemy the Twelfth is her dad, and Cleopatra fled to Rome in search of political and military aid after Cleopatra's older sister had become too powerful. Oh. So, that's another thing in this family. You marry your sister, but you still got to bloody watch out for her. <laughs> God, God. God. <laughs> Crazy. There's no loyalty in this family. Oh, come on. I bloody married you. <laughs> she became too powerful. Could, oh, yeah. uh, even he was married to her, so they were. Oh no, king, no, this is queen. Cleopatra's uh, sister. Right, so she's outside of the. Yeah, so Ptolemy the Twelfth, because he's a bad leader and corrupt, he's off doing stuff, and then one his oldest daughter, start you know, oh, so has a bit of a coup. Right, so two day coup d'état. But then the older sister died, oh. possibly who was poisoned by Cleopatra's other sister. Oh my god. And then she became the sole ruler of Egypt because uh, she, the father was off in Rome, hiding away. Right. So, so she only became Cleopatra because her other, her older sister died. I imagine the older sister would be Cleopatra. Right? Oh no, there's two older sisters, and the one of them has just taken out another. So Cleopatra still has to wait, hang out. But then Cleopatra and her father, Ptolemy the Twelfth, they came back from Rome, and they took the throne. And they had her other sister beheaded. So now the two older sisters are gone. They're both dead. So now Cleopatra's... Cause so, am I right in saying that only one of the sisters is Cleopatra? No, neither of her sisters are Cleopatra. <laughs> Even from the very beginning, like she's ended up as Cleopatra because her older sisters had died, right? That seems to make sense to me. Oh, no, no. Her birth name is actually Cleopatra. Right. It's not a title. It is a name. No. So they're all called Cleopatra? No, not all of them. So why do they wait to the third one if there's always a Cleopatra? Look, Matt, I can't answer that question. This is also the people that, at a stretch, marry their cousin. <laughs> All right. I'll accept that as an apology. <laughs> <laughs> so the two older sisters have been taken care of. So now Cleopatra, at age 14, became her father's co-ruler oh my God. when they came back to town. Although at that age, her power would have been very limited. Her father, Ptolemy the Twelfth, who was the king, he died a few years later in 51 BC. His will made the 18-year-old Cleopatra and her 10-year-old brother, Ptolemy the 13th, joint monarch. So they're in charge together. A 10-year-old. So he's just like, chocolate milk for everyone. <laughs> Woo! Uh, the, well, actually not, because the first three years of the reign were difficult due to economic failures, famine, and uh, flooding of the Nile. Because they're letting the 10-year-old be the treasurer as well. <laughs> and he's given chocolate milk to everyone. And that's delicious, but won't help in a famine. Yeah. He's, Come on, mate. His credentials are bloody they're mud. This is filling them full of sugar. No nutrients. There's no nutrients in there. And the flooding. Don't get me started on the flooding. That's his fault too somehow. <laughs> they're being tricked thinking that it's full of calcium, but I mean the sugar certainly outweighs mm. any of the calcium mm. benefits of a chocolate milk. <laughs> Young Ptolemy, please. Come mate. On. Oh, <laughs> Jeez Louise. Trade the treasures for Pokemon cards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ptolemy, All right. you're the boss. Uh, Cleopatra married her younger brother, Gross. the 10-year-old. 
but she quickly made it clear that she had no intention of sharing any power with him. No chalky milk for you, sir. <laughs> a few months later, relations completely broke down between Cleopatra and Ptolemy, which is hilarious because he was 10 years old. <laughs> This is fucked. But I imagine that he's got people working for him. She's got people. <laughs> he's got people. He's got people. Have your people call my people. Yeah. Ptolemy, you're 10. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I'm imagining, I'm remembering how my brother treated me when I was 11 and he was 18. Very, very similar. Like a wife. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yuck, but with very little power. You know? No power. He had all the power. He had a car. Cleopatra dropped her brother's name from official documents and her face alone started to appear on coins, which went against Ptolemaic tradition of female rulers being sub- subordinate to their male co-rulers. Huh. That a girl. Uh, but Cleopatra was very different to her family in many ways, especially the rulers of the Ptolemite family. Now, the Ptolemies, insisting on Macedonian Greek superiority, they were pretty arrogant, had ruled in Egypt for centuries without ever bother- bothering to learn the Egyptian language. <laughs> Great. So you can't even talk to your people. Great. They did Great. not embrace any of their local customs. Great. No. So this is like 300 years of them being like, I'm not going to learn the language. <laughs> I'm just the king. <laughs> I mean, when would I have to possibly speak to an Egyptian? <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> Cleopatra, however, I told her she was different. She was fluent in Egyptian, eloquent in her native Greek, and proficient in other languages as well. She may have been fluent in up to nine languages. Wow. wow. Uh, she, because of this, she was able to communicate easily with diplomats from other countries without the need of a translator. She was extremely well educated, and this along with her habit of making decisions and acting on them without the counsel of the members of her court upset some of the high-ranking officials. Mm. So she was doing it for herself. She's a boss. Absolutely. Uh, one example of this is when she ordered the deaths of the sons of the king of Syria when they came to the court requesting her assistance. <laughs> Jesus. Hi, um... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Just wondering if we could have a... Um, we just need a hand with something. Our car has just broken. That's so embarrassing. Oh, okay. Okay. Fucking cut your head off. How about that? Oh, no. This has to be lost in translation. Uh, it's just... I'm, I'm fluent in nine languages. Uh, okay. But I just got a flat tyre. I, I invented flat tyres. Okay. So you definitely understand what I'm asking and you're still going to cut my head off. Oh, yes. Okay. And you can see why her advisors were pretty upset with that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in 48 BC, her chief advisor, along with uh, some of her generals, overthrew her because they were sick of her not listening to them. Uh, and they put Ptolemy the Thirteenth, still a teenager, her brother, uh, in power because they thought he'd be easier to control. Oh, no. I don't think he's going to be easy to control. Cleopatra and her half-sister exiled and were exiled and they fled to Syria. They're hiding so they've been banished. By the younger brother and his cronies. So the cronies, sort of, there was a bit of a, a coup d'etat. Absolutely. A two-day coup d'etat. Oh. Unconfirmed length. So, two days. Yep. <laughs> Does it stand a two-day? Just a cheeky tour. Uh, in response, while whilst exiled in Syria, Cleopatra raised an army of mercenaries and returned the following year to face her brother's forces at Pelusium on Egypt's eastern border. So she was facing off against her bro. I wonder how how did she raise them? Like from birth? Yeah, it took a long time. That is that is an effort to raise a whole army of mercenaries as well, because you got to pay them all from birth. <laughs> so that is tricky. Do you, would the, she then have to train them as well? Yeah, was she a, was she a gunfighter? Not a gunfighter, obviously. A she very was, was she a good fighter? She was fluent with nine guns. Wow! Bang! 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 <laughs> That's four. Shoopy, shoopy. <laughs> Pew. Six. Chicka, chicka, chicka. And of course, we, of, of course, we saved the best for last. <laughs> wow. Is that what you, those ones? Yeah, the laser at the end was really good. You yeah. are the coolest person ever. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> How did she get? I've never been. I haven't been bullied for so long, and it doesn't feel good, Jess. Well, the best part is that I am. Se- I was serious when I said it before. I was like, "That was so cool," and you've taken it like I'm happy you go at you, know, which what, is what now even done? better. What it's have I done better. to make her just, bully me like this? I'm just trying to love you. <laughs> Pew! Just a new kid at school, and I'm just trying to fit in with my nine gun body, noises. And the bloody the quarterback over here is. <laughs> Hey, nerd! 
How you doing there, little nerd? <laughs> yeah, you like playing with guns, huh, nerd? Well, yeah, I play with footballs. <laughs> I'm a real footballer. Some people... <laughs> I don't know why my voice keeps getting higher. <laughs> my voice is getting higher and higher. <laughs> yeah. Till eventually only dogs can hear that dickhead. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that well, dickhead was you. <laughs> he was acting out you in a weird <laughs> helium. To, I was just trying to say you're cool. Yeah, no, nah, you're right. You are right. I'm very, very cool. <laughs> Shut up, nerd. <laughs> hey, nerd. <laughs> How you doing, that little nerd? <laughs> but it is, it is interesting that she went away like without any power anymore in another land where she doesn't have power and even still was able to raise an army. So it's confidence. I think it would be confidence. <laughs> she's, just, she's just confident. She just goes, guys, just go with me. She on just this. owns it, and people are like, you know what? I'm going with her on this, and that's what it is. But uh, maybe they, when they expelled her or whatever, mm. expelled. No, that's not the word. What am I looking for? Exiled. Exiled her. Maybe they they let her go with like buckets of cash. Yeah, probably. Said, look, we're not going to fuck you on this. Take a lot. Well, I mean, we're fucking you on this, but. <laughs> We're not going to f- real fuck you on this. We'll give you cash. Yeah. And then she went over and just like... I think a lot of the time it's also, dudes, I'm the rightful queen. Mm. If you come with me oh, and we right. take it, then we'll have all the money. Right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, like, it's more of a no money now, yeah. more but money later. so much money later. Yeah. No, oh, we no, no, we no fee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, hang on. In a bad way for you, army. Yeah. So, yeah, please, please help me win. Now we have to go over to Rome for a little bit of the story. Ooh. I, love, I love it. I won't, I won't complain. Are we checking out the Spanish steps? Oh, what's that over oh. there? Trevi Fountain. Hello. Oh, a Colosseum. Good to see you. Let's throw a coin in over our shoulder or something. Like in that movie. Into the Colosseum? Yeah. Wow. You hit that's, a gladiator on the face. <laughs> that's a big throw too. Yeah. It's quite large. Look, I'm a, I've got quite an arm. I was quarterback for... You were not, nerd! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, over in Rome, shit was getting really nasty between two former friends, Julius Caesar. Oh, I thought it was going to be Joey and Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> they did have that tiff. Mm. That was a big falling out. Julius Caesar. Who I'm sure you've heard of. Mm. And Pompey the Great. Pompey. <laughs> Pompey. 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 I knew Jess would love this name. Not Pompey. 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 Pompey the Great. Pompey. Pompey the Great. Mm-hmm. How do you spell Pompey? P O M P E Y. Pompey the Great. Oh my god, I love it so much. Pompey. Sounds real fun. Pompey the Great. In my head. It's a clown, isn't it? Marshmallow Man. Marshmallow Man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, he's so cute. And everyone's like, oh, Pompey. And he's like, oh, Pompey. And he just gives kids hugs. That's that's Pompey, right? Until he suffocates them. No, man. Inside Matt. of his puffy <laughs> no, tummy. No, only, that only happened once and it was an accident. Pompey is nice. Pompey is one of the greatest generals that has ever lived. Yeah? He, he wasn't found not guilty. They just didn't have enough proof to <laughs> convict. That's all, Jess. So I'd say Pompey. jury's still out in some ways. I like Pompey. You're going to have to do a lot of work to convince me otherwise. Uh, what, so killing a kid? <laughs> uh, in a made-up uh, scenario. That you just did there. The marshmallow man <laughs> we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great, both of whom deserve their own episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for a while in Rome, things seemed super stable. A political alliance was formed between three extremely powerful men, and together they ruled Rome for seven years. They were the extremely popular and intelligent Julius Caesar, mm-hmm. the richest man in Rome, a man named Crassus. <laughs> He's the richest man in Rome. Crassus. Crassus. Very good. And one of the greatest military commanders of his time, Pompey the Great. Pompey the Great. Uh, they call themselves the Triumvirate. Try, Can- meaning have a, have a go. Have a go, guys. Have a go at ruling for seven years. Yeah. Um, meaning sometimes we're uncertain, but you just got to keep They're just having a go. trying. <laughs> sure. yeah. And virate is just to finish off the word. Yeah. They just need to add some spare letters there at the end. So hey, they just chucked them in. could I be Bop the Great? No. All right. All right. You won me over. <laughs> oh, that you won wasn't me hard. Over. No, it doesn't. It has none of the same ring. It's got to be like Boppy the Great. I don't like that. It's very patronizing. <laughs> you don't like Boppy the Great? <laughs> patronizing to be called the Great. <laughs> Boppy. Come on, man. Yes, well. oh, sorry. Um, so they've got this political alliance called the Triumvirate. It works well for a while. Caesar was worried... 
uh, that Pompey would get too big for his boots while Caesar went off uh, fighting as a general in Gaul, which is now France. Sure. So he tied Pompey to himself by marrying Pompey to his daughter, Julia, even though she was much younger and betrothed to another man. Okay. <laughs> but now they're like family, right? Yeah. Right. Can't stab me in the back. Now I'm your father-in-law, Son-in-law. dog. Yeah. Pompey. Hey, Pompey. Hey, we all Big get it. Marshmallow cutie. Oh, you're all you've got that powdered sugar on you. You're so cute. You just leave it in little <laughs> footprints wherever you go. Uh, Julius Caesar famously smoked a lot of marijuana, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> just really high thinking his friends are marshmallow. That's how he, got the, he wears the leaf on his head. <laughs> yeah, the marijuana leaf. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some ready to go all the time. Hmm. Oh my God, I love Pompey so much. Uh, Julia... However, who married Pompey, Julius Caesar's daughter, died. Luckiest girl in the world. She died in childbirth. Aww. So lucky. Giving birth to marshmallows, not easy. Uh, they, they don't start soft. <laughs> they oh. start hard and get soft. They're like bricks when you have them. Baby marshmallows are bricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning a lot today. Yeah. Uh, she died in childbirth, breaking apart the family bond. And her pelvis. <laughs> So the bond is broken, along with a couple of other things. Uh, and then the rich man in the triumvirate, triumvirate Crassus, he <laughs> died. Suddenly there was no t- a buffer between the two very ambitious men, both of whom who wanted to be the sole Uh-oh. person in charge of Rome. So it was Caesar v. Pompey, two of the greatest military commanders of their day, possibly ever. Uh, Pompey was backed by the politically conservative Senate, the Roman Senate, and Caesar was backed by the populares or the commoners. Mm. He's very popular with the everyday man. So now it's a Jew umfront. What happens? Well, they're both. They're both. Remembering great. this is an episode about Cleopatra. <laughs> yeah, but this is very important. Uh, a lot, after a lot of goings on all over Rome between uh, Pompey and Caesar, both talking how about they should, yeah, you know, the other one's dodgy, you know, sort of. A bit of trash talk, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A bit of Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather Mm -hmm, style. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They had a few. They went on a world tour. Mm -hmm. They threw cash at each other. Mm -hmm, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? I love this, yes. Uh, The two finally faced off at the Battle of Pharsalus, which from now on will be called the Battle of Phallus. (laughs) Oh. That yeah, means dick, uh, right? Is that why you said why you Is say that, that why you're telling this whole story? Just phallus. so you can make that phallus joke? Yeah, that, was, that, <laughs> that was fun. Oh, that was a phallus joke. Yeah, it looks <laughs> really similar to phallus written down. Uh, Pharsalus, <laughs> or the Battle of Phallus. You see what well, I did there? dick joke. Uh, it took place in Greece. Pompey had 45,000 troops to Caesar's 22,000. Oh, hang on. That's... More troops. more troops. That's more. He was seen much more likely to win. Pompey. Yeah, Pompey. Caesar found himself isolated in hostile country with only 22,000 men, and he was short of provisions, whilst on the other side of the river was Pompey with an army twice as big. And they had, like, food trucks. Oh, and... they were having a great... There was a roller coaster. Fish tacos. Yeah, on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pompey wanted to delay, knowing that the enemy would eventually surrender from hunger and exhaustion. Because they had no, no provisions. We would love to fight today, but a few of the boys had a bit much to last night at the uh, wine truck that we brought over, and we're just feeling a little tender, a little tender today. So, hey, do you reckon maybe we could fight tomorrow instead? How about that? I promise we'll fight tomorrow. Well, I'm promise. afraid he was pressured by the senators uh, who were there and by his officers who really wanted to fight because Roman people love to fight. He reluctantly, especially when you have twice as many as the other team, you're mm. like, we're going to fucking smash this. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Uh, he reluctantly engages Pompey in a battle and suffered an overwhelming defeat, ultimately fleeing the camp and his men disguised as an ordinary citizen. Caesar had outsmarted Pompey by concealing a quarter of his army and attacking them from the side. Oh, Caesar clever. was very clever. How would Pompey disguise himself as a regular citizen? Like, surely you would notice a marshmallow man (laughs) just wearing a a stuck-on moustache and a cape, you know? You'd be like, hmm, that guy looks a bit different. Hang on, no one wears capes in Rome. (laughs) Uh, So Caesar won and Pompey only just escaped with his life. Still being pursued, he fled to Egypt, where Cleopatra's younger brother, Ptolemy, was in power. Ptolemy and Pompey. That's right. They're going to be mates. Two old best mates. Well, they know each other because in ancient times, powerful kingdoms had client relationships with lots of other rulers. Basically, you pay the bigger kingdom and in return, they won't destroy you 
and might even protect you from other kingdoms. Oh. So Ptolemy was one of because Pompey was super uh, super wealthy. Yeah, he had a lot of big army. He had lots of clients. Ptolemy's one of his old clients. Oh. I've looked out for you before, mate. I'm just coming to one of my clients when I'm in need. Sure. Okay. So Pompey hoped that Ptolemy would take pity on him. Pity is always good. When Pompey's boat pulled into the harbour, Ptolemy marched down to the coast to welcome him. But he and his counsellors had uh, chosen not to risk offending the victorious Caesar. And rather than going out to meet Ptolemy, the king instead sent out a small boat to bring the Roman to the land. Mm -hmm. So he sent a little boat out to get Pompey off his bigger boat. Pompey was nervous, but it was his only shot. So he got on the boat and he sailed to the shore. But as he prepared to step onto the sand, he was stabbed and (gasps) struck down with swords. Oh, no. And then he was held over a fire and roasted a little bit. And then well, uh, the outside got crispy. Bloody delicious. <laughs> His men watching on from the ship that Pompey had just left quickly fled the scene. No. So they ran away. Ptolemy had Pompey's head cut off <gasps> and his naked body thrown into the ocean. Why was this? Because, because Julius Caesar arrived two days later because he was chasing after Pompey. He found out that he'd gone to Egypt. Ptolemy presented Julius Caesar with the head of his enemy Pompey, hoping that it would ingratiate Caesar and be like, hey, I killed your enemy for you. Now we're friends. Uh-oh. Yeah. But this completely backfired because Caesar is a pretty complicated man. Caesar was enraged. Pompey was Caesar's political enemy and they just had a big fight, but he was a Roman consul, so like a respected Roman, and the widower of his only legitimate daughter who died during childbirth. So he got really upset when he saw the head. Oh. He turned away with loathing of the man who bought the head to him. And when Caesar was giving, given uh, Pompey's signet ring, he reportedly started to cry. Oh, oh no! Wait, so what? How did how did um, Ptolemy know to do that? Did he he'd already heard word of the yeah, battle? Yeah, big word that it was Julius Caesar versus versus Pompey over in Rome, and he uh, picked his side. And when well, he he was he hoping picked to, the winner's he side. Packed, he hoped to back the winner. Yeah. Right. You're right. Oh no! And he was, Pompey. Was he, you know, Is he still ten? No, he's sort of he's a teenager now. But I'm sure his advisors were like, "Dude, what you you're gonna?" Why would you welcome the guy who's got nothing versus the other guy who's got the big army? Right. So you take him out and you look like a legend. He copped a bum steer. Yeah. But so instead of being Caesar's new BFF, Ptolemy just pissed off a really powerful man. Why does everyone, I, every character I like is brutally murdered? I'm sorry. Do you want to back anyone else or tell you if they live? No, because every time I pick someone, they get murdered. What if I told you that all these people died over 2,000 years ago? That the only person from back then who's still alive is me. Yeah, and I've never backed him. <laughs> never back a loser. <laughs> ah, and it's just like so immediately I loved him. And then, of course, he had to get murdered. Sorry, he had a great life. He was a really powerful, successful man. Died doing what he loves. He got beheaded. Yeah, he, he loves it. He loved the sand. Okay. He loved the feeling of sand going down his bloody neck <laughs> into his guts. He loved it. Okay. As Tell long, me, prove he didn't. As long as he was happy when he was being. He was stoked. stoked. Okay. So With, stoked. you know, iron <laughs> rods. Uh, Caesar seized the Egyptian capital and imposed himself as the arbiter between the rival claims of Ptolemy and his sister Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. So now he's like, I'm in charge here. Convince me who I, who should be the king or queen. Right. Ptolemy tried to quietly flee to the Egyptian uh, <laughs> to the Egyptian coast. Ptolemy, you piece of shit. Caesar, however, was not going to let the young ruler slip away to possibly stir up trouble later, and had him bo- brought back to Alexandria and sort of kept under guard. Oh, the suburb in Sydney. While he sorted, while he sorted shit out. <laughs> Didn't know Australia played a part in the Cleopatra story. That's We're fun. always there. We've been at every Olympics. We've been at every <laughs> battle of phallus. We've been there. We love it. I'm I'm finding this really fascinating, but I think I am not entirely following. It's really hard to follow. Is it? So what? No, no I'm I'm okay now. What happened? So Ptolemy, Tol- Tol- why did he flee? I missed that. Oh, because he just showed Caesar the head and the back. He fled so straight he was- away from his own place. Yeah, so he was like, oh, I don't think this is going to go like I thought it would. Try to run away. Yeah, back and then just, oh, I'm just going to go check. I think I left the oven Caesar's on. Caesar's like, hey, kid, you can't leave. So at this point, Caesar's army, the Roman Empire, is way bigger than the whatever Ptolemy Empire is. Yes, in Egypt, yeah. Yeah. 
So now Caesar is like, okay. Rome's, Rome's huge. It's like the, the biggest power this is in the, the world. Oh, right. This is the peak of Rome. Yep. Julius Caesar is, is one of the big dogs of the Roman Empire, right? Yes. One of the, yeah. the, probably the biggest. So now Caesar is saying, all right, Cleopatra and Ptolemy, which one of you is going to be the ruler? You prove yourselves. Is yeah, that that's right? pretty much what Great. he's doing. Uh, Cleopatra was eager to, to quickly take advantage of Julius Caesar's anger towards her brother Ptolemy. Mm. However, at this stage, mm. she was still in exile and knew that there was no way that could, she could simply walk into the palace to have a chat with him. Sure. So, recognising uh, Caesar as her chance to regain power... MSN messenger. She just jumped on... <laughs> Doodaloo! Yeah. Hey! Hey. <laughs> Caesar has seen your message. <laughs> oh, great. Typing? Oh, you stopped typing. <laughs> oh. So Caesar is oh. is out, is in exile as well, is he? <laughs> no, he's in Egypt. He's in Egypt, which isn't in exile. <laughs> he's no. out of exile. Exile's a state of mind. It's not a place. Right, gotcha. Gotcha. No, no, no. He's, he's so he's still ruling Rome. And Egypt. Well, yes. Because <laughs> it, it was now... a triumvirate, then it was duumvirate. Now it's a sole no. He's, the, he's, the, he's the left guy. The last last yeah. man standing. Duumvirate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, pretty much he's in Egypt just because he was looking for Pompey. And whilst he's there, he's found oh, this whole other trouble. I forgot about Pompey for a moment. And the whole other trouble is the battle for the throne. Yeah, that's right. In the, and this empire is called Ptoleopoly. <laughs> yes. It's the, called the, yes. It was called the, the Ptolemy dynasty. Ptolemy dynasty but they of are Egypt. Of Egypt. So, yeah. yeah, they're pharaohs. Pharaohs, yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry. Now Cleopatra needs to talk to, to Julius. Yeah, so... She sees Caesar as her ticket back to being the queen. So according to the Greek historian Plutarch, she had herself rolled up in a rug that was a gift for the Roman general and it was carried through the enemy lines to the palace and presented to Caesar. She stepped out and said, Happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> she did not say that. Okay. Well, I that could tell, I could tell yeah. that was going to confuse you. It's no. his birthday? <laughs> <laughs> that is an absolutely crazy way to enter. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so according to legend, she jumps out of the rug and Caesar seemed to strike up an instant uh, affinity for her. And by the next morning, when Ptolemy the Thirteenth, the, the brother, arrived to meet with Caesar, Cleopatra and Caesar were already lovers. The young pharaoh was outraged. Cleo had just cut his lunch. <laughs> oh, he was interested in Sleezer as well. Oh, he's probably going to sleep his way to the Sleezer. top. Sleezer. Yes. Do you reckon? You should call him Sleezer. Sleezer. Well, he just moved in on his own sister. His own being Toliopoly. Yep. Also, his own wife. <gasps> what? Remember they're married? That's a spanner in the oh, works. Oh, yeah. Remember they're married? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think anything ever happened because he was 10. And she was always not interested in him. Ah, oh, that's okay then. But at this time... Cl- <laughs> she was not interested in that brother. Uh, Cleopatra was 21 years old at this time and Caesar was 52. Perfect age Bit gap. of a silver fox. Hot. Like a hot 50 though, eh? I reckon oh. he was like a real fit 50. I'm imagining George Clooney. Mm. Hot. I may be thinking of the film Hail Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> I really may. Be. Hot. <laughs> uh, so Ptolemy's rocked up and he was also hoping that he could get in Caesar's ear. But Caesar's been somewhere else and not in her ear. <gasps> Maybe in her in ear. Her, in her ear. In her ear. <laughs> hey, whatever whatever you're into. No uh, judgment here. Uh, Ptolemy the 13th cracked it. He turned to his general, Achilles, for support and war broke out in Alexandria between... Achilles. Achilles? Achilles. Achilles. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's a great name. That'd be real confusing on the on the battlefield. Yeah. Achilles. All right. Yeah. No, not me. Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at. Thank you for translating for this fucker. No worries. <laughs> Doesn't get basic jokes. Keep going with your dumb little report, well, fucko. I get jokes. <laughs> yeah, cop that. <laughs> uh, so war broke out between Alex- uh, in Alexandria between Caesar's legions and the Egyptian army. So another thing to note is that Caesar's got some of his, his legions there, but not all of them. So for a while there... Legion is 10,000 uh, armed soldiers. Very good. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like head of cattle. <laughs> legion is... I think it, it, is, is, a, it is a number. I think it is something like 10,000. Maybe 7,000? Or be, maybe That would be so annoying. It's if not it's even seven. locked in. Maybe make it ten. Oh, no. It's five thousand. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, five's okay. Sorry, guys. But that's a that's a rounded number. I can deal with that. 
Sorry, everybody. That makes sense. Uh, Caesar and Cleopatra were besieged in the royal palace for six months until Roman reinforcements were able to arrive and break up the Egyptian lines. So pretty much because Ptolemy's got his whole army there, he can do well for a while until more Romans come and then smash the shit out of him. Yeah, then he's fucked. Uh, Ptolemy the Thirteenth drowned in the Nile, attempting to escape after the battle. And the other leaders of the coup against Cleopatra were killed in a battle shortly afterwards. Caesar pro- proclaimed Cleopatra ruler of Egypt and named her younger brother Ptolemy the Fourteenth as her co-ruler. <sighs> in reality, however, the, the young boy had very little power. So pretty much she's now top dog. He was an infant. <laughs> it's interesting that Julius Caesar's got the power to proclaim the leader of Egypt as well. So is, is, is it sort of, are they? does their kingdom fall under the I think Roman the, Empire? They are of? one of the clients that I was talking about before. Clients. Again. You see, when I hear client, I'm thinking, you know, Maybe they'd come around and do massages for him or something like massages. that. Massages. Got to see a client. Massage. The first. If I was on Family Feud and and the <laughs> and the and the topic was things people who have clients. My first thing would have been masseuse. <laughs> Maybe accountants. I didn't want to say accounts, but that's it. Sorry, oh Jesus, it got cold in here very quickly. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jess. All right. Uh, the answer is clients. Let's see how many. <laughs> wow, that is literally the worst answer we've mm-hmm. ever had on the show. Right? Sex worker, bing, 17. Matt. <laughs> sex worker? I never said sex worker. <laughs> That's where my mind. Client. Clientele. Ah, right, okay. Mine went to the financial advisor. So. Financial advisor? <laughs> Matt, we, can we go on Family Feud? Is there like a, I know we're not family, but do they bend the rules for like people that are associated well, together? Well, they do like celebrity Family Feud. Great, we'll people. go on that. We'll go on that. <laughs> We get to go on Celebrity Family Feud. I mean, it's like us. they're not linked it's other us. than like a group of comedians. It's so we could just be... Three comedians and Shane Warne or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's get Warnie in. Yeah, Warnie on. Yeah. Aussie cricketer. Who would who, who would, would be, be our fourth... Family, who'd be our fourth person on... If not Warnie, it'd be Mesa, surely. Probably, yeah. He'd Been be handy too, I reckon. Times. Yeah, it would have to be. It would have to be, contractually. No, Mick Mason, practically our boss. Yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> Yeah, ugh, under the thumb, eh? Oh, God. How about that guy? Oh, we're, we're definitely one of his clients. <laughs> he gives us sweet massages. <laughs> and sex. And accounting. <laughs> Services. <laughs> he does it all. He does it all. He does it all. What a one guy. One-stop shop. Anyway, what are we talking about? Uh, Cleopatra. Oh, yeah. She travelled through <laughs> Egypt with Caesar in great style and was hailed by her subjects as Pharaoh. Uh, Caesar stayed in Egypt for a while and Cleopatra gave birth to a son that she claimed was Caesar's. Uh-oh. She named him Ptolemy Caesar. Oh, f- oh no. <laughs> but so confusing. He was, he was known as Caesarion, or Caesarion rather, which translates as Little Caesar. Oh. So he's known to history mostly as Caesarion. Little Caesar sounds Little Caesar. Like, like a cartoon spin off. <laughs> like, Little Caesar. <laughs> it does. Oh, what's he up to? I thought of uh, someone ordering a small salad. <laughs> just a little Caesar. Just, <laughs> just a little. Just a little. Just I really, I was expecting the the spawn of Cleopatra and, and Julius Caesar to be a more famous name. But I don't, I don't, I can't put my finger on Caesarion or whatever his name is. Well, do, you, do, you, do you know anything about him? No, no. I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with Caesarion's work at all. I'm guessing it dies young. We will find out together. I don't know why you're saying that. I didn't know that uh, Julius Caesar and Cleopatra had bumped ugly, so that's kind of fun. Did yeah. you know that, Matt? World's colliding. I'm, I'm not sure now. If you'd asked me before, I'm not sure. Okay. It felt now that I think I did, but I'm not sure that I did. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't, ever. I wasn't surprised. I'm like, yeah, this sounds right. No, I was surprised. Anyway. Uh, well, she ain't done yet. Let me just tell you that. Of course she ain't. Uh, Cleopatra hoped that Big Caesar would name Little Caesar as his official heir. Right. However, he chose his grandnephew Octavian instead. Grandnephew. Grandnephew. Yeah, that's a spit in the eye. Okay. Uh, interesting to note that Octavian would grow up to be the first emperor of Rome, Augustus. Oh. So a very famous person. Yeah. So it was a good choice. Was Augustus a fair and, and noble leader? Well, he was around for a long time, lived to be in his 70s. That's pretty good. In charge for a few decades. That's not the question I asked, but fair enough. <laughs> well, I don't know if you could say he's the, cause he's the first one, the first emperor, which for hundreds of years, Romans wanted to not have an emperor. Oh, right. Okay. So they got rid of their king. Yeah. And then for hundreds of years, they had this amazingly advanced, like they had a senate and people voted. and It's not 
amazing. Mm. Like it mm. wasn't, f- it was very corrupt. But also, not many societies had that two thousand years ago. Yeah, I think I think I, I heard that um, after the Roman Empire fell, there were all these things that they had uh, they they'd brought about from their sort of modern society that were washed away when it all burnt to the ground. And weren't redone for hundreds of years. They yeah, weren't, I think it took like, hundreds of years to catch up. They went backwards again. Or like they had these like great aqueducts where they would bring water yeah. into the city and then when they broke down, they were like, oh. I picture I don't know technology it. just on a, like a, always um, on the increase. But yeah, it took a dip after the Roman Empire and had to... And then I think again in the Middle Ages it dipped as well. Yeah, right. That's when it was dark. The, oh no, the Dark Age would be different. Oh, that's the same time. Same yeah. time. And then, then the Renaissance... Ah, uh, that's when things got good again. <laughs> People started painting vividly. <laughs> They're just painting so vividly. They vividly painted. Painting so oh, look, well. I know a thing or two about history, so. You knew how many people were in a legion, kind of. I knew that was a, minute, a certain amount of people. Huh? Mm-hmm. huh? Mm-hmm. I did not know that, so I'm impressed. That. Yep. Uh, Caesar went to Rome when he went home to Rome, and soon after he brought Cleopatra and her entourage along. That's nice. The Egyptian queen resided in one of Caesar's country houses. Sure. As a foreign head of state, she was not allowed inside Rome's pomerium, which is the inner city. Oh, so CBD. Not, not allowed to have the uh, kings and queens from other places. That's interesting. Any That's CBD. Interesting. Hmm. That's not how they do it now. If anyone, if there's a king or queen from overseas coming to Australia, they're Imagine like they'd go going, to Richmond. You know, they're like just <laughs> absolutely oh. calming themselves. <laughs> <laughs> what? They get pretty excited here when <laughs> any sort of dignitaries oh, come man. over. They like, like, coming themselves. Oh, that's not a thing that's ever been said before. <laughs> I'm going to say it all the time now. Oh, mate, I'm, 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 I'm coming absolutely myself. coming myself. Oh, I really thought that that was a thing until I said, I'm like, nah, that's not a thing. Because, you know, <laughs> shitting yourself. So I was trying to do the like the sexually excited version of that. They're coming themselves. Coming themselves. What would people say? They're excited. Yeah. Excited. Excited. <laughs> Beside <laughs> themselves? Coming beside themselves. <laughs> wow, that is hard to oh, do. Uh huh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> He's coming beside himself. That's well. That, that used to be a way of uh, avoiding pregnancy, but um, <laughs> it wasn't a hundred percent. It was like a lot of the other prophylactics, which I think means condoms. <laughs> a lot of. Oh, I only learned that from American Pie. I've never heard it said outside of that. Yeah, he also fucked a pie. Oh, look, I learn a lot of things. You are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a cool guy. <laughs> You're the coolest. All right, look, I thought you were joking before and now I can see. You hear the difference? Now yeah. I'm definitely taking the piss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, back, uh, enough of Matt coming next to himself. The relationship <laughs> between... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell myself to do go on here. <laughs> Dave, do go on. The relationship between (laughs) Cleopatra and Caesar was obvious to the Roman people and caused a big scandal because Caesar, now the Roman dictator, was already married to Calpurnia. Mm. But Caesar did not give a fuck and he even erected a golden statue of Cleopatra... (laughs) He erected a golden statue of a hand giving Calpurnia the finger. <laughs> fuck off, Calpurnia. A statue of him next to her statue. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> a little speech bubble in Roman. A bit of Latin coming out of his ass. <laughs> anyway, he put up a, a statue of her. A nice one. Uh, representing her uh, as Isis, the Egyptian <gasps> god. So, uh. Sorry, <laughs> not the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Right. Nobody's ever erected a giant gold statue of me. I'm sorry, Jess. I'll get around to it. No, it's I don't. It, I shouldn't. Firstly, I don't want to have to ask for it because then that cheapens it a little bit. But also, it's, uh, you know, I, I suppose... think you should, you're just going to find a married man. That's the key to this. Ah, uh, I've been looking at single men. Also, give birth to Caesarion. Okay, got it. Step one, step two. Very easy process. And then I get a I get a statue. Yeah, yeah all you got to do is just bang one of the most famous people that's ever lived. Easy. Super easy. No problem. Bet Midler. <laughs> I'm gonna bet Bet Midler. Ba- Oi, Betty, where's my statue? <laughs> you are the wind beneath my wings. You have to sing to it yeah. while you bang her. <laughs> oh man. You know the rules. That's a real slap in the face, her own song sung badly to her. No Excuse offense. me? No offense. God, Look, you, you, I only consider you bad compared to Bet. You bear a part of your soul and they just shit all over you or come next to you. Hey, whatever Bet's into, alright? 
They don't do that, Jeff. <laughs> uh, two years later, in 44 BC, on the Ides of March, March 15th, Julius Caesar was assassinated. No! Why does everyone keep dying? Surely you knew Julius Caesar was on the way out. He was assassinated by senators that would worry that were worried that he would declare himself king. So for decades, the, hundreds of years, they've panicked that every time someone gets too powerful, they're like, he's going to call himself king. He's going to call himself emperor. So they panic. Uh, he was stabbed 23 times by a group of over 30 senators. So he didn't even get a stab in each. No. Uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> 23 times by 30 senators. Jeez, you'd be bloody you stiff. Just line up and have a go. <laughs> maybe that was maybe two, two to a knife at, on certain stabs. <laughs> yeah. One, two, <laughs> stab. <laughs> Oi, if Gary says that he stabbed him, he's lying. I saw him miss. That was me. I got him in the neck. I got him in the neck. Gary said he did it. Fucking liar. Let's stab having... together. One, One two, two, three. <laughs> All right. It's J on three, but you three on three, which makes more sense. <laughs> uh, he was stabbed 23 times by a group of over, over 30 senators, including... Gaius Cassius and his brother-in-law, Marcus Junius Brutus. They're the two most famous people involved in this in this plot. I learned that the first ever recorded autopsy in history was performed on Caesar. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. There you go. He was murdered adjacent... <laughs> it's just a piece of parchment that said he did. He did. <laughs> but we looked into it. It's recorded. But they filed it away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just in case DNA was invented in a couple of thousand years' time. <laughs> invented. He discovered. did. He was murdered uh, adjacent to the Theatre of Pompey, named after his old enemy. Oh, the marshmallow. So there you go. Uh, Cleopatra and her entourage were still in Rome when Caesar was assassinated. And after his death, uh, they returned quickly with her relatives to Egypt. Mm-hmm. When her brother, Ptolemy the Fourteenth, who she's supposed to co-rule with, the young kid, when he died, allegedly poisoned by Cleopatra... Oh. Cleopatra made Caesarion her child with Caesar as her co-regent. Oh, but didn't marry him. So there's probably. no more. There's no more brothers and sisters left. She's killed them all. Shit. In Rome, two days after the assassination, Mark Antony, who's the next most important person in the story, mm-hmm. who was one of Caesar's closest allies and best generals, again an incredible general, he summoned the Senate and managed to work out a compromise in which the thirty assassins would not be punished for their acts, but all of Caesar's appointments, everything that he decreed law, would remain valid. So th- that was the rule. Like, you guys get away with murder if you don't repeal all the stuff that he's done. Hmm. By doing this, Antony most likely hoped to avoid large cracks in government forming as a result of Caesar's death. Try and make it a little bit smoother. Hmm. A second triumvirate was formed between General Mark Antony, Caesar's nephew Octavius... Okay. And another one of Caesar's allies called Lepidus. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a good good name. Yep. Uh, Caesar's murderers, the guys I talked about before, Marcus Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius, had usurped control of most of the eastern provinces of Rome, including Macedonia and Syria. So pretty much they'd stabbed him and then gone off with their own armies. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were causing shit in the east. What a hectic time. It's crazy. So in 42 BC, Octavian and Antony, who were both part of the triumvirate, they set out to war and they defeated Brut- uh, Brutus and Cassius in two battles. Hmm. So they took out the, the enemies. Hmm. They agreed that Mark Antony would be the ruler of the eastern provinces, including Egypt, while Octavian would be in charge of the west. So now Mark Antony is the boss of Egypt. Cool. Well, good for Mark Antony. Good on him. In 41 BCE, Cleopatra was summoned to appear before Mark Anthony. She was uh, summoned to appear before him. Now he's in charge of Egypt uh, in modern day Turkey to answer charges that she had possibly given aid to Brutus and Cassius when they were fighting against Mark Anthony. Okay. So he was like, I heard you were giving money to my enemies, dog. And she was like, nah. (laughs) Well, she didn't even bother showing up. She delayed in coming. (laughs) Poseidon. And then she delayed in coming in front of her. <laughs> and she delayed further in complying with Antony's summons, making it clear that as Queen of Egypt, she would come in her own time when she saw fit. Mm-hmm. A real mm-hmm. power play. Yeah. That is a power play. She's a boss-ass bitch. Egypt uh, at this time was seen as teetering on the edge of economic chaos, but even so, Cleopatra 
made sure to present herself as a true sovereign, appearing in luxury on her barge. 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 Matt? Barge. <laughs> I mean, I just did what he did, but barge. It's so much better when it comes out of your face hole. <laughs> barge. Please, welcome aboard my barge. <laughs> welcome to barge. <laughs> oh, you've never been? I love the barge. You must barge. Oh, oh come barging with come me one barging. time. Oh, darling, it's so nice and barge. <laughs> Oh. Oh, you ma- oh, you barge. I mean marsh. <laughs> you really marshed. Marshed. You marshed. You marsh. You must come in marsh. Marsh is the best season for marsh. <laughs> <laughs> this character's awful. <laughs> Imagine spending a day with this guy. Oh, please. Oh, my barge. <laughs> my barge. <laughs> please, I have champagne. Nah, I'm back in. Let's go. I want to party with this guy. Oh, I am not a guy. <laughs> I want to party with this gal. I'm a goddess. This goddess. Oh, you clear patches. <laughs> My goodness. Sorry about that, uh, uh, King Pharaoh. That's not right. Sorry, I'm nervous when I meet royalty. Um, <laughs> My queen. Gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on your barge. Oh, um, <laughs> oh my darling, there's nothing. It's very, it's okay, very... hang on. Is Cleopatra Zsa Zsa Gabor? Zsa 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 Yes. Do you think that's how Jaja said yes? Oh, Jaja. Oh, Jaja. Oh, you must. Oh, you must on my barge. Dave looks like one of them tiny dogs, only it's learned how to talk. You know them tiny dogs? Yeah. A cha cha. He's baring his teeth. He's normally a sign of, of aggression, but he he's doing a sign of hospitality. Nothing aggressive about me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's back. I just watched him transform. I just realized I, had st- I was halfway through a sentence. <laughs> Appearing in luxury on her barge. She was dressed as Aphrodite when she rocked up. As you do. The goddess of love. Oh. On her barge. How does Aphrodite dress? I'm picturing go go boots just above the knee. Mini skirt. She got boots above her knee. They start above the knee. <laughs> Yeah, What's start, going on? Start above the knee and just do the thighs. <laughs> just the thighs. She's wearing like a bracelet on her thighs yeah. of leather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Aphrodite for you. <laughs> She's crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> crazy in love. <laughs> Go on. Uh, Plutarch, who I mentioned before, he he's, wrote. He's the big historian from this period. That's I right. He wrote a series of biographies of people from this time and hundreds of years before called Parallel Lives which despite being written 150 years after Cleopatra lived, is one of the main sources from this period in Rome. Hmm. Uh, and it's often often referenced. So he's a, yeah, he's a very famous historian. Hmm. And a lot of the time it's like, well, we've got nothing else, but Plutarch said this. Then we go with Plutarch. We go with Plutarch. This is how he described her first encounter with Mark Antony. She came sailing up the river in a barge with... A barge... <laughs> In a barge with gilded stern and outspread sails of purple, while oars of silver beat time to the music of flutes, fifes and harps. She herself lay all along under a canopy of cloth of gold, dressed as Venus in a picture, and beautiful young boys like painted cupids stood on each side to fan her. Her maids were dressed like sea nymphs and graces, some steering at the rudder. So she's trying to be like, oh, that's the end of the quote. She's being real glam. Sounds like she's a Moomba float. (laughs) (laughs) Totally does. (laughs) For American listeners, the Moomba parade is much like the Macy's. uh, It's such. It's a huge deal, guys. Billions of people. That's a thing. Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. Yeah, that's the one with all the floats and stuff. My dream is to be Moomba Queen. Yeah, I reckon you could achieve that goal. Do you reckon? I reckon. Yeah, what about that year those two pedophiles were? So before no, I... only one of them was a pedophile, Dave. <laughs> oh, sorry. So I'm trying hey. to rewrite history. Either Zig or Zag. I forget which one. Two clowns. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice one. I'm not talking about a third pedophile. <laughs> anyway. There's so many. She's dressed beautifully. Mm-hmm. And Mark Antony fell for her. Oh, my God. Jeez. She must be a babe because she just keeps... Oh. She, just she keeps must like, be. Hey, like, the these are like, oh. extremely powerful men, and you know, I reckon she's a witch. <gasps> yeah, oh, she could be. New that's, theory. That's my theory. Uh, Mac, Ma- Mac, Mac, <laughs> she called him Mac and my badge. <laughs> Mark Mac Antony, Antony and Cleopatra instantly <laughs> became lovers and would remain so for the next ten years. Oh, that's nice. She would bear him three children. Oh, 
including uh, twins, that he considered her... It's like that's impressive all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, two, Three. two pregnancies. Oh, two and ones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he considered her his wife, even though he was married first to Fulvia and then to Octavia, who is the sister of Octavian, the guy that he's supposed to be oh, in the triumvirate. That's so confusing. He considered her his wife. That's not how it works, Babe, Mark you're Antony. my favourite, though. Don't <laughs> well, worry about the others, I but you're my, you're my main girl. He eventually divorced Octavia, who's his ally's sister, to marry Cleopatra legally. Because you can only have two. So he did put... Was he married to Flavia still? Oh, who, she, he to got the Red Rooster Flavor rap? Th- threw her in the river. Ah. Really? I don't know. Right, okay. She's gone. So She's they're gone. married. They, they get married? Cleopatra and Mark Antony? Yes, they do get married. Oh my goodness, I forgot about one sister. There's one left. But don't worry, to safeguard herself in Caesarion, she had Antony order the death of her sister Arsinoe, who had been banished uh, to the Temple of Artemis. Arsinoe. <laughs> you could not live in Greek, I mean, Roman time. <laughs> you ask me, Arsinoe. <laughs> what was the other one called? Arsinoe and Killer Me. So great name. Akila me. I that, said that. I think the best name so far, apart from maybe Jess's favourite, is that Lepidano or whatever. Lepidus. Lepidus. Lepidano. Oh, Lepidus. I was picturing more like a half leopard, half human. But Lepidus, like a human no, falling a apart. Is... No, it's okay, like yeah. Lepidus. Lepidus. Yeah, that's a sick name. Is the leopard the top half of them or the bottom half? Oh, which would you prefer? Top half. I'm on a cat head. <laughs> So confidently, yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon you're right. But then the strength of the bottom legs, yeah, of a man. <laughs> I don't know. Only this man doesn't skip leg day. This report has been derailed a lot. It's been fun. I'm so sorry to the people. All well, the people who don't like dodgy riffs are not are not still listening. I'm not sure why they listen to the podcast. To be <laughs> it's funny. It's funny when we get that feedback. People going. This Guys, would be great yeah. if you just took the topics more seriously. It's like, well, there's probably more serious podcasts you could listen yeah, to. Yeah, type Cleopatra into iTunes <laughs> and go away. <laughs> <laughs> or just Wikipedia it yourself. We come here for the fun. I'm I don't here come to, here I'm, to learn. I'm here to learn. I'm not. I'm here to learn. I'm here to laugh. And I'm here to lament life choices. <laughs> <laughs> like starting a podcast mm. together. We're no, getting through. We are getting. That. We're getting through it, guys. Mark Antony eventually moved to Alexandria and lived there with Cleopatra for the rest of their lives. Aww. Are there a number of uh, unverifi- un- unverifiable stories about Cleopatra? Most, most of which have become a legend because this is two thousand years ago, and even Plutarch never lived at the same time as these people. Mm. But one of the best known is that she playfully bet Antony at one of their lavish dinners, which they often shared, that she could spend ten million. Sistery on a dinner, which is a shitload of money. He accepted the bet. <laughs> what well, a fun bet. Well, so, <laughs> what is, what's on the line here? Because if There's she, no if she stakes. so she wins by spending a lot of money, and 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 she she wins money from that. I reckon I could win that bet. <laughs> Jess, I bet you I can spend a lot of money. Okay. But if I win, mm-hmm. you've got to give me a lot of money. No. <laughs> uh, he accepted the bet. The next night, she had a conventional, unspectacular meal served. He was ridiculing this, being like, <laughs> steak and chips. <laughs> 10 million sartre, I don't fucking think so. Steak and chips. Oh, fucking hell, unless I hope you got 10,000 steaks out back. Uh-oh. But then she ordered the second course. And this time, only a cup of strong vinegar came out. And he was like, <laughs> Cup of strong vinegar? How many <laughs> centarks could this cost? <laughs> you, you bloody finished all the chips. <laughs> Can't have salt and vinegar on these chips. But She's... the vinegar turned out to be Elton John's cum. <laughs> and he does not sell that shape. <laughs> Jeez, I panicked there, didn't I? That <laughs> really, was, was a panic re- bar. Really it's panicked. Because we both, in my head, I went to cum also. No. I want you to know you that. Always do that. I went straight Matt... to cum. <laughs> We are adults. Yeah, we are adults. I like to imagine, Legally, adults. I like to imagine mentally. You, whenever you panic, you instantly come. go to Elton John's, John's cum. cum. Yeah, like, all right, mate. I've, I've got a gun here. Give us, give us your wallet. Oh fuck, Elton John's cum. <laughs> Pardon? Oh, and then just, he disarms him. Yeah, it's just a thing I do when I panic. Sorry, just take my wallet. No, what I actually do is when someone holds a gun at me, I pull out a little tub I've got in my pocket. 
<laughs> Where are you going with this? I open it up. Yep, little tub. And I go, mate, um, look at this. This is empty. I don't have any money. And this is where I keep it all. In a tub. And then I put it back in my pocket and I pull another one out. And this one has Elton John's come. <laughs> oh, the old bait and switch <laughs> with Elton John. Come. Yeah. I mean, what do you do with Elton John's come? I assume everyone's got a little... Little little tub. Tub of EJ's. Yeah. Yeah. EJC. Yeah, 10, 10 million <laughs> sestries worth. Anyway, anyway what's the, the vinegar? The vinegar came out. She then removed one of her pearl earrings <gasps> worth a shitload of money, uh-uh. dropped it in the vinegar, uh-huh. allowing it to dissolve, and then she drank the mixture and was like, bang, 10 million sestries. And she won the bet and had indigestion all fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> so That's... that pearl was worth 10 million... So one pearl was worth that amount. This is like the Queen's pearl. I'm so... That's such a dumb fucking bet. But also, when you've been in a relationship for a while, sometimes... <laughs> you got to do things to keep it fresh. Yeah, you know, just like, it, keep it kind of fun and light, I guess. But isn't, it, isn't that a weird way to do it? To yeah. have to drink vinegar to win a bet. Show, Judd, don't you look foolish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> you look like a real idiot. <laughs> Is that Elton John? <laughs> oh, no, I've drunk the wrong cup. <laughs> Not oh, again. That's worth 100 million sesters. <laughs> that's gross. Whatever it is. Yeah, I would have just like spent it on like a big feast. But I think the point there that's is... That's what that, he expected. Yeah. That's the thing there. So And it would have had to be a lot him. of food too. So this is... So imagine um, we, we just heard... We heard about something now that happened in 1867. Is that 150 years? Yeah. But it hasn't been written down anywhere. Uh-huh. It's just been this weird story that's been passed down, and now we're writing it down. No, that's not, no... E- that's not exactly how it worked, though. So Plutarch would had access to Roman libraries, which right. no longer exist. So his work, which is based on other work, ex- outlasted the original sources. Right, okay. That makes sense. So we're, we're believe, But, you know, how history is always... It's... Like, she's written that in her diary. Got him. Yeah. But there's a little bit of it, you know... The, because sometimes um, translations don't quite work, Dave, you see. When you might write down, I dropped a pearl into vinegar. Um, well, that's what it reads like. But what she actually wrote was Elton John's cum. So, like, sometimes... No. She had really bad handwriting. She did have bad handwriting. <laughs> and um, uh, those, she also uh, was the uh, one who wrote Candle in the Wind <laughs> initially. Um, but he read it as Elton John's cum. It's a very confusing <laughs> time in history. And that's why you'll hear, like, these... Different versions of events. Um, I'd like to point out at this point that my parents listen to this podcast, oh, no. and I'm really sorry, Mum and Dad. I reckon I've been pretty good this episode. Sticking to the facts, I am. Hey, Dave, can you edit out a couple of bits? <laughs> um, couple. Whenever I mention Elm John's come. <laughs> e- EJC. That's number one. Uh, secondly, when I mention coming beside myself, <laughs> it's pretty much just get rid of all the come. Do you want me to release a 15-minute episode? <laughs> yes. At least it'll finally be informative and none of those silly riffs. Like, oh, Let's get back to the facts because I love them so much. We all do. Like the first triumvirate, the second triumvirate was ultimately unstable and could not withstand internal jealousies and ambitions. Antony detested Octavian. This is Mark Antony. We're back with him. <laughs> it's been so long since we talked about these people. And spent most of his time in the East, mostly in Egypt, while Lepidus who's the other guy, yes. he favoured Antony but felt himself obscured by both his colleagues. He felt that it was always about Antony and Octavia. It's never about Lepidus. Uh, so he got fed up with that. He went for a power grab. That didn't which is work. what a big cat would do. It did not work out well. He miscalculated. He attacked oh. the wrong sort of place. Octavian saw this as an opportunity to take control, so he sent him into exile, oh. leaving just Antony and Octavian, who hated each other, and it didn't help that Antony had just left Octavian's sister for Cleopatra. Uh. Octavian argued that Antony was a man of low morals to have left his faithful wife abandoned in Rome with the children to be c- promiscuous with the Queen of Egypt. Mm. Mark Antony made an ultimately fateful mistake when he distributed lands held by Rome and Parthia, which is another one of their regions, amongst Cleopatra's children and granted them many titles, especially Caesarion, who was the son of Julius Caesar. 
who he adopted as his own son. This was called the Donations of Alexandria and was a step too far for Rome. Basically, Octavian was especially worried that Caesarion, who'd been declared the legitimate son of Julius Caesar and therefore was more associated to Caesar's, Caesar's still really popular name, that people would start backing the young guy instead of him. Right. So he's like, I've got to get rid of this guy before he grows up. So oh, Octavian... Young. Called it. So Octavian convinced the Senate to levy war against Egypt. In 31 BC, Antony's forces faced the Romans in a naval action off the coast of Actium. Cleopatra was present with her own uh, Egyptian fleet, but according to Plutarch, Cleopatra took flight with her ships at the height of the battle, leaving Antony, who had to follow her. So she sort of ran away. Uh, Following this battle was another battle where Antony and Cleopatra's navy was actually destroyed, and they were forced to escape to Egypt with only 60 ships left. Octavian, now close to absolute power, did not intend to give Antony and Cleopatra any rest. So in August 30 BC, assisted by General Agrippa, he in fully invaded Egypt. As he approached Alexandria, Antony... Fully invaded. He got in there with a sword. As he approached Alexandria, where Antony and Cleopatra were hanging out, Antony's armies deserted to Octavian. So they started being like, oh, I'm on the other side. So oh. everyone's, everyone's sort of le- leaving him. Uh-oh. With no other refuge to escape to, Antony committed suicide by stabbing himself with his sword in the mistaken belief that Cleopatra had already done so. When he found out that Cleopatra was still alive, his friends brought him to Cleopatra's monument in which she was hiding, and he died in her arms. Uh, Bit of a Romeo and Juliet scenario yeah. almost. Mm. Bummer. Uh, Cleopatra was allowed to conduct Antony's burial rites after she was captured by Octavian. Oh, so he finally no. got there. Octavian then demanded an audience with the queen where the conditions of her defeat were made plain to her. The terms were hardly favourable and Cleopatra understood she would be brought to Rome a captive to adorn Octavian's triumph. In Rome, a triumph was a civil ceremony held to publicly celebrate the success of a military commander. Oh, wow. So you'd go out and you'd come home and you, it's basically Moomba. <laughs> <laughs> There's floats, you ride in a chariot, with gold all over you, and part of, part of the tri- the triumph, everyone comes out and sort of it's like a ticker tape parade. They they cheer you on, and all the loot and the booty that you've captured, oh. all the gold that's on on display, on display, and also the people that you've captured, the people that you've captured wow. are on display. Oh. so like prisoners being like, look, I I captured this king, like it's now exactly he's in chains. Exactly like Moomba. Exactly like Moomba. Mm-hmm. That's really brutal. Yeah. What a weird world where you you could be a brutal king one day and the next day you're like a, a show float. On a float, yeah. And this was like a big deal for Romans. This is a lot of why they would do this. Like wow. why, the, why Because of the glory of the triumph. They, a lot of them didn't care about the money or the power. Well, they loved the power, but they, they loved the idea of a triumph. And so she was like the crown jewel in the triumph because it's like, yeah, I captured Mark Antony's mistress slash wife now and wow. the queen of Egypt. So recognising that she would not be able to manipulate Octavian as she had Caesar and Mark Antony, Cleopatra asked for and was granted time to prepare herself before she went back with him. Oh, no. She then had herself poisoned through the bite of a snake. Famously, Plutarch says an asp, but modern scholars now think it could have been a cobra or cobra. Very cool. Octavian had her son Caesarion murdered. Oh, no. But her children by Mark Antony were brought to Rome where they were raised by Octavia. Oh, his ex-wife. No, his uh, sister. Yeah, sorry, Mark Antony's ex-wife. Mark, oh, Mark Antony's ex-wife, yes. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't that's it? That's real weird. It's big of her, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that, that ends the, uh, the story oh. of Cleopatra the Seventh. I just wanted to wrap up by talking about Cleopatra's modern perception. Although she, I know she's traditionally regarded now as a great beauty. Short bob haircut. Fringe. Fringe. A lot of and and she's always looks like a classic sort of a, Egyptian princess, is sort of what you see. But because of her Macedonian Greek ancestry, she may have looked more traditionally Greek than Egyptian. Hmm. But no paintings sort of survive. There's there's bits images of her on coins and stuff, but that's hard to sort of get a, a, a picture from. Uh, the ancient writers uh, uniformly praised her intelligence and charm over her physical attributes. Intelligence. Her uh, Islamic scholars praised her for intelligence as well. 
Hmm. Plutarch did praise her, although he, her intelligence, I should say, but he's also probably the reason we think of her as, as beautiful, I should say. Uh, her charm and beauty were immortalised in pop culture when Shakespeare wrote Antony and Cleopatra, mm. and the plot is actually based on Plutarch's description of her in Parallel Lives. That's pretty right. cool. Wow. There yeah, you go. that's right. Wow. Uh, in 1963, Elizabeth Taylor famously played the title character in Cleopatra in what was then the most expensive film ever made and almost bankrupted 20th Century Fox. Wow. It was the highest grossing film of the year, but it cost so much... In today's money, it costs over $300 million to make. And it's the only film in history to be the highest grossing film of the year and still make a loss. Wow. It goes for over four hours. <sighs> no, that's Jesus. too long. I was going to watch it for this, but then I saw the running time and decided four not to. Four hours. Fuck that. <laughs> uh, the, film earned, the film earned... Elizabeth Taylor, obviously one of the most beautiful people of her era, so that was another thing that sort of put the beauty... Mm. Uh, in modern perceptions. And also the fact that people just fell in love with her instantly a couple of times. Yeah, that's, that, I mean, there's got to be something quite charming about her. There must be. <laughs> Can relate. <laughs> um, oh, stop falling in love with me. <laughs> just, just does fall easily. Is yeah, I'm real clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> Including Richard Burton, who was uh, Mark Antony in Cleopatra. He fell for Cleopatra. Oh, her and him and Elizabeth Taylor. Got it on. Oh, yeah. Uh, the film earned Elizabeth Taylor a Guinness World Record title for most costume changes in a film. 65, 65 costume changes. Who counts this? The record, the record was beaten in 1996 uh, by Madonna in Evita, who had 85 costume changes. 85. Far out. That's my fun fact to end on. I'm a fact about Madonna. Yeah, great. That's how I like every episode to end. Wow. Good report, Dave. That is Cleopatra. What we like to do at the end of the show, Dave, is sorry to sorry to be Mr. Business and bring us back to the topic at You're hand. You're always about the bloody business. But um, do we have some people to thank? Yes, of course. We do like to thank everyone that supports the show over at patreon.com slash do go on pod. Everyone who supports the show gets uh, different levels of rewards, including the bonus episodes. We had a lot of people signing up lately for that uh, that level of support, which is really, really awesome. Uh, we just released last week, or the weekend just gone by, an episode on The Killdozer. A Killdozer. Yes. Where, where a guy... Uh, so, oh my God, it was go, so weird and great. Where a guy in Colorado decided that uh, he'd been fucked over enough by the council and decided to deck out his <laughs> bulldozer and turn it into... Spoiler a, alert, Dave. A Killdozer. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's good fun And you, if you uh, support the show, you can hear that And we, they won't be there forever But r- right now, we've left up the eight other bonus episodes that we've done So if you support now, you will li- you legit get access to nine bonus do-go-on reports Well, most of them are reports Some are Q&As, but yeah, there's a lot of reports there One of them is a really long, drunken episode at the Meredith Music Festival Which was fun That we sandwiched with way more Q&As back in the studio Yeah <laughs> So weird. What are we doing? A lot of the mini reports go for over an hour. <laughs> yeah, we're like, guys, let's keep this to half an hour. Three hours later. Anyway, yeah, let's thank some people. Yeah, we'd like to thank by name some people that support us through uh, Patreon. How else would you thank them? Than <laughs> Mime, by name? Miming. No, but like actually, indivi- I should have said we'd like to thank them individually by name <laughs> rather than just being like, thanks everyone, bye. <laughs> we thank them by uh, holding up. Their blood samples. We thank them by height. <laughs> Tall people to the front. Uh, t- today, I'd love to thank 182 centimetres. <laughs> <laughs> if you are that height, thanks so much for pledging. Uh, could I could I make a, a thank you? I'd love to make a thank you to a uh, good friend of the show, Noel Lagar. I'd like you to guess everyone's height. Oh, he's he's um he's quite a quite a six well, two. Yeah, six two or. 186 in the old money, approximately. Okay. Uh, he's from Minnesota, which is where the Timberwolves are from. And uh, they're, they're a team, I think, Andrew Bogut, the Australian, mm-hmm. used to play for them, I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Noel Lagar. <laughs> I, I wonder if Noel plays any b-ball. Well, it'd be 6'2", he does, I reckon. <laughs> That's b-ball jazz. small in the NBA. <laughs> b-ball's like, uh, it's, a, it's cool, cool people language for basketball. I'm aware. <laughs> Quick, do a low, do a low pass. Uh, I'd also love oh, to thank um, from Cambridge, which is a real centre for uh, academic excellence. Mm. Um, Stephen Bat. I'd oh. like to go into bat for Stephen Bat. Can uh, you guess have his, a bat? Can you guess uh, his like IQ? To... 
Um, six two. You guess Noel's height. How? No, I, well, I, I'm gonna. I'm <laughs> he's six foot two in IQ. <laughs> he's actually he's um he's not that smart. And his nickname is Low Bat. <laughs> Because he doesn't... No, no, he's he's not very energetic. So that would have made more sense. Low bat. Good bat on, short for battery. Good on your low bat. Jess doesn't get it yet. But when she does, <laughs> she is going to love it. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you would just look... I, I just thought you got it and hated it. But both I, are fine. I Honestly, I got a message and I looked at that and stared at it. Look up to the top uh, right-hand corner of your, your phone and you might get the... Uh, low battery. Mm. Anyway, can I thank people? Yeah, yeah please. <laughs> can I have one more? Go- oh no, <laughs> I'm so sorry. You and Stephen Bat are my favourites now. Um, you both get one free whatever you like. Just message me on Twitter, and I'll. I just want to make up for you for that horrible <laughs> effort. One free dumb. whatever you like. That's yeah, well, I, my, whatever you like in the form. I can only tweet it back to you. Whatever you <laughs> want, it's got to be... I can give it back to you, but it has to be within 140 characters or a photo. Okay, what about your bank account details? Oh, Dave, you dumb cut, man. <laughs> <laughs> he no, I can't, got you. It can't be anything. Obviously, it can't be anything like that. Oh, now you're putting rules. Anything you like, except for not this, this, and this. Mm, mm. Well, no, I mean, it, it, it's got to be a thing. It's got to be a complete thing. Not something you can then go and do something All with. Right, so picture. it can't be like a picture of me that picture you, you go and picture bat of over. Or anything. Can't be a picture. It can't be that, no. You can't go and have a Stephen bat over me. Sorry, Noel. Um, I guess if one of you was going to do it, it would have been Noel Lagar. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to... Just cut in here, if I may. Thank you. I would also like to thank, also from Minnesota, interestingly, and also Lagar. Oh. Dane Lagar. Dane Lagar. Now, let's guess well, Dane's we... height and their relationship. Well, I'm going to say, obviously, uh, Noel is the better Lagar, and I will fight to the death anyone who disagrees. Okay. That wasn't uh, an answer to either of the questions oh, I, can't I asked. Believe, I really thought you were going to stand up, stand by your man, but you didn't. No, I just... You just stood aside. Well, I asked a question you ignored it. So, Dane would never do that. <laughs> what, uh, what have I told you? That? Dane's IQ is high and, and so is his height. There, I said it. Great. Well, what, what have I told you that Dane has been a supporter of the show for longer Ooh. than Noel? So, so, so maybe Dane got Noel into it. So, Dane, thank you. Thank All right, you, Dane. Dane. I take it back. You're maybe equally good. is Dane, I feel like, and I'm so sorry, Noel, if I'm wrong here. I feel like Noel is an older name than a Dane. Yeah. Do you reckon Dane got his dad into Dane, it? Dane got his dad in. That'd be oh, cool. We are really rolling the dice I know. Here. I'm so sorry if you're like brothers or cousins or... Married. <laughs> yeah. Imagine being really a family. Which you can in your country. Yeah, you can't um, hear. Imagine. Imagine that. Anyway, so Dane or Noel, let us know. Please, I'm intrigued now. Uh, but I would also like to thank, if I may, um, from Fort Worth, Texas. <sighs> He's got a lot of worth. It's our good friend, Chris McCulloch. Chris McCulloch. There's a Pantera song opening track. Oh, my God, of course there is. On uh, Reinventing the Steel Hellbound. It, it name checks Fort Worth, Texas in the chorus. Fort Worth. It's really good. There good you song. Go. There Banger. You go. It's a banging tune. And Chris, I'm sure, knows the song, obviously. He'd know it well. Would be their anthem. Theme song to Fort Worth. Hellbound. What is it? Hell. <laughs> it's the best town city anthem I've ever Fort heard. Fort Worth, Texas. Did they say Fort Worth, Texas? Yeah. Hellbound in Fort Worth, Texas. Hellbound in Fort Worth, Texas. They sing it slightly differently than that. Dave, do you want to thank some people? Or? You know who we do know. Who do we know? All the way from San Antonio, Texas. Man, if we are doing this American tour, we, we must go to Texas. Yeah, Texas is great. Yeah. We do have to go to Texas. All the way from San Antonio. I would like to thank Christina Aguilera. Bailey. Aguilera, damn it. Don't Christina. talk over the listener's bloody name. This is the big time when Dave gets to thank her. Do it you... again, do it again, do it Christina again. Christina Bailey. Thank you so much, Christina. Christina with a C-H or a K? It's a K. Ooh. Oh, okay. The correct way, am I right, Christina? She gets it. Her friends call her K-Bay. <gasps> That's cute. Oh, K-Bay Bay. I wonder if they do. I bet they do. That's fun. Uh, Christina is five foot nine. Yeah. Oh, tall. Uh, of course, uh, San Antonio, their team in the NBA, the Spurs. Okay. David Robertson, number five in the nineties. He was a uh, in was the nineties. He was the center, and he was a he was a real gun. Awesome. Great mustache. Christina knows all about it. Yeah, yeah I'm sure you remember that that, that reference. Mm. And I'd also like to thank 
we're going to leave America just for a couple of minutes, and we're going to enter the greatest country on earth. It is Scotland. Aye. All the way. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. All the way from Glasgow, it is Daniel Gordon. Oh, I was hoping for a more Scottish name. Oh, Daniel Gordon is... isn't. Wait, is Gordon English? Gordon's gin. Daniel, Dan- Gordon. Daniel Gordon. Oh, that's good. From Glasgow. Gordon. No. I'm Daniel Dirty Gordon. Dog. No, that's a <laughs> bit of a time? mess. Daniel, you Dirty are not. Dog. You are not a dog. Dirty dog. You are a clean dog, Daniel. <laughs> good on it. Is, is that offensive, Daniel? I'm so sorry. But I thank you so much for supporting He's offended the show. by being called clean. You clean dog. <laughs> you get you're shanked good, for less in Glasgow. You're a good boy, Daniel. Yeah. What an no, accent. It's no. the best. It's the best. I can't do it. There used to be an ad for Lost Dogs Home in Australia, I think. Oh, it was. here we and go. Goes, Ni- a 90s ad, was it? It was a 90s ad. Right. And this guy's driving along, a Scottish guy, and there's a, a Scotty dog on the side of the road, and, and cars are driving past, but all of a sudden someone pulls over and opens the door, and he goes, Lost Dog Fella. Come on, up in. Only says it with more of a Scottish accent than that. That's great. But it was a it was a great ad. And then a German lost shepherd is also fella. lost, and a, <laughs> a German man pulls up because you can only save dogs of your own. Yeah. yeah. Your own kind. Rules are rules. Didn't make them, but I follow them. Yeah. Lost dog fella. <laughs> That's you, Daniel. You're a lo- you were a lost dog, but come now. on, hop in the podcast, Daniel. You're we bloody rough again. Come on, we found in. each other. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to that. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you so really sorry. did us a favour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, remember, you can always uh, hit us up at any time or support the show through patreon.com slash do go on pod. All the links are in the description of this episode, including that Sydney show. Remember, we are, Woo! depending on what will motivate you more, either half sold out, not sold out, or fully sold out. Yeah. That's right. No more tickets. Don't even try. Yeah. Do not. Please try. Please <laughs> continue to try. There are some. Uh, we've there got our some. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram links in the description as well. It's at do go on pod for all those things. And do go on pod at gmail.com if you want to suggest a topic. But until next time, until next week, we'll say thank you so much. And I will say goodbye. Later. Bye. Yep. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you. 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 It's up to you.